Hey, A.B. <laughs> hey, what's up? I'm, I'm doing all right. Today has been a good day. How are you? I'm doing great. You know, I'm on a marathon run right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just came from another interview. Yes. Oh, my gosh. How, how did it go? It went well, you know, talking about what I love and, you know, it's lit. It's lit and I'm here. So we here. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to do this live with you. Um, before you hopped on, I was talking about like, University of Dope has been around like, y'all are not new to this, y'all are true to this. And like one of the first, like black owned card games in the space, we all know phase 10 was the first in the 80s. But you know, <laughs> back when things were yeah. really popular, like you all were around. So I'm super like honored and excited to, to join you tonight. I'm so glad that you having us because you know, like I said, it's going to be lit, and I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> well, for those who are joining from your end of the gram, I'm Liz Renee, founder of Pulp Card Game, a Black collegiate drinking card game that will give you nostalgia and make you pull up. Um, so HBCU, PWI, as long as you're Black and you had an experience, this card game is for you. Um, but tonight is about collaboration, and I'm super excited to be joined by A.B., of University of Dope. So, A.B., I want to turn it over to you to just, you know, introduce yourself. Where are you currently located and what schools do you rep? All right. Well, hey, everyone. My name is A.B. Perkins. I'm co-creator of University of Dope, the first card game dedicated to hip hop culture. Our game is not trivia based, but majority rules and unpopular opinions are welcome. Um, I'm in Brooklyn, New York, you know, got to represent. And the schools we represent are um, our team. Me and my business partner, we met at Central Connecticut State University. Another member of our team is also from CCSU. So collectively, we rep CCSU. Okay, I love yeah. that. And just to confirm, so you live in Brooklyn. Are you from Connecticut or you've always been from the New York area and you went to I'm from the I'm from the Bronx. Gotcha. Okay. And I went to high school and college in Connecticut. Okay. So fun yeah. fact, I was born in Connecticut, Stanford, Connecticut, um, did elementary school, middle school, and then I moved down to Georgia for high school and stayed for college. Nice, nice, mm -hmm. nice. So yeah. you did like a switch. Yes, yeah, you know, you know, culture shock. I needed it. But um yeah. <laughs> and so I know you know from the run of show. We always like to keep it black owned when we pull up here. So is there anything you're drinking tonight? And if not, anything you would like to drink? Because I know you just got off an interview, so you didn't have time to fix a drink, but you know. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, right now I have this is a black owned mug. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> it says I'm a throw shade if I can't get paid. That so the mug is black owned because it's ours. And right now I just have um like I had some tea, but it's like a little spiked, you know. I, you know, I, I didn't want to ruin the vibes, right? <laughs> but you know, we won't give away all your secrets. We have Imani from Black yeah. Girls Love Starbucks, also rep in New York. Hey, um, Ben from DC, represent for the Ro Rose Hour podcast, um, the wine styling. So let's get into it. So yes. let's talk a little bit about how you and your team, your college homies, like. How did you come up with the concept for University of Dope? Well, it all started with my business partner and I. Her name is Marion, a.k.a. Skinny B. Hey, boo, hey. <laughs> we, went, we went to college together. We were on the dance team. But we created this game post-college. Even though it says university, people think like we were like, like Mark Zuckerberg and them starting it in college, which would have been <laughs> lit, but we didn't do that. We were grown. So <laughs> she came to visit me in Brooklyn. We went out to eat. And randomly, like the truth, the truest of stories is she would ask me about Cash Cab. And those of you who are gamers, you guys remember oh, Cash Cab? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I would say, girl, there is no Cash Cab coming to Brooklyn. Like that's not, that's not, that just, that just doesn't happen. And the joke was initially, man, like if I was in a Cash Cab and they asked us to name all the members of En Vogue, oh. like we would get put out the Cash Cab. So then we were laughing about that. And then I kind of like doubled down on the, the question. And this is usually where I start the story for interviews. But, you know, we hear, we can. <laughs> yes. Um, 
I asked her if she can name all the members of Wu Tang because you know to stay in this cash cab, this fictitious cash cab that's not coming to Brooklyn. She said yes. I didn't believe her. I asked her if she could name them all if she'd been drinking a couple cocktails. She said yes. I still didn't believe her. We had our dinner. We laughed about it and, you know, debating about it and such. And we went back to my house and we Googled Wu-Tang drinking game. It did not exist. We figured RZA and them made it up already because they made everything else. And it didn't exist, so we made it up. So literally, we are our target audience. Like, we, we saw the void. Like, you know how they talk about in business? Like, oh, fill a void. Like, we're the void. We wanted to play our own game. So, yeah, that's how it started. You know what? All this talking, like, and I know that you started your game 2016. Yes. 2016. Um, I'm like, this is a dope concept for a TV show. The way you just described it. I don't know if you have that in the works, but I'm just saying. That is, that is something we, you know, we consider... Like, it's not just a game, right? It's a lifestyle. So that's why we have merch. That is why we have, like, the University of Dope live game show. Like, we started that in quarantine, but we can talk about that a little bit later on. And we consider all of that the UDU, the University of Dope universe, like Marvel in them, right? Like, it's all encompassing. So we want to have licensing deals. We want to have television shows. We, we want to have merchandise events. You name it, we want it. So, yeah. I love to see it. And just shouting out everyone who's joining. Um, True Scoops, a fellow cohort member of the Target Four of Founders alongside me. I see Black Ash everything. Um, Devante, everyone, welcome, welcome. Um, so one thing I want to get into, because at the time, can you can you describe from your perspective, like the market for black owned card games when you decided to launch in 2016. I have some thoughts, but I want to know from your perspective as someone who was like, we're going to do this. Well, I mean, I think, I feel like there were so few, like in this resurgence of it, right? Um, like there was black card revoked mm -hmm. and that was it that we knew of, right? <laughs> because it was one of those, neither, was, neither one of us went to school for gaming or anything like that. We literally stumbled upon this because we wanted to play our own game, basically, <laughs> right? So we, and I think that kind of like helped us in a way. Like we didn't walk in with, oh my gosh, what are the percentages of black card games doing well or this? We're just like, we are just two friends and we hear like, hey, and you know, and I think that kind of like added to the energy of the company. Like we are just like fun. So yeah, we didn't even think about that because there wasn't enough data, you know, to, to mm -hmm. even say, oh, well, this is doing well. And initiatives, like none of those things that have started were around when we, when we started. And I'm learning there's still not enough data. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> still not enough. Um, so I think that's really cool knowing that you are two women who started this card game, you know, living in Brooklyn. This is perfect since, you know, Brooklyn, hip hop, et cetera. Yeah. So I think a lot of the things that we talk about is sometimes we see the end product. We get a card game. We see a lot of people playing it online. We see like the great website, but we don't always know all that it takes to turn an idea into a physical product. So can you talk a little bit about that journey, especially like you said, didn't go to college for game design or anything like that. So I'm sure there was a learning curve. Well, the, the learning curve, it kind of, it comes back to your branding. Like my background, I am a DIY blogger. I tell people if Martha Stewart and Snoop Dogg had a baby, it would be me. So having a blog and being an influencer, I knew about branding and I knew how I wanted and how we want a university of dope to make people feel. So we kind of like started from there. So that kind of like brings us always brings us back to our, like our ethos. We want people to feel like wherever you were when buy you a drink came out. <laughs> and we literally say that like whether it's your soft, whether your sophomore year in college or where you were when T-Pain was peak T-Pain. That is that feeling we want you to feel when you play our game. It's just fun. You're just here. You're just happy. It's 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 awesome. So that kind of plays in a role in like our crest, right? We met in college, so that's why like, university, right? So that's we want that that feeling of 
hey, you're you're young, you're youthful, and you're just like living living your best life. So that is kind of like where we started off with that. But the learning curves are one things like the thickness of a card, right? <laughs> you don't think about it when you're playing it, and the texture and all of that. So there's a physical, you know, the physical learning curves of game development and game design and then there are things like within like more specific to us rappers that did not live up to their full potential right like oh. who will you call if they stay in the game right okay. so you have i see you have an og deck right mm -hmm. yeah you have an og deck so um we did like rebranding right before covid started like pandemic you know so that was also another you know, challenge for sure. But before then, there were people, and I don't know how OG your deck is, but like there was this designer was in our game at one point, like one of the first iterations of it. And this is when designer was doing what he, you know, doing what he was doing. I like him, no offense to him, but we had to make, and there was a couple of others that we liked at the time because this is 2016. This is year, and, and that's when we went to print. So this is a year before that, right? Mm -hmm. But there was a time where we we're like, hey, this, it's not going to work out um, keeping it super current, right? Mm -hmm. So we, we made the decision like, hey, you really can't be newer than Drake in this deck. Gotcha. So we can have expansion packs to include others, but like Cardi is in the game, but it's one of those, if there's an artist that if they stop making music today, like if Cardi stopped making music today, I think um, she has been, had enough impact to be memorable. Mm -hmm. And maybe I'm biased because I'm also from the Bronx. So whatever, I'm like, Cardi stays, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you yeah. see the comments, but Imani said, damn, designer, what happened? Exactly, you know, Nish Loaf, right? And there's some people who were more popular and they just made me look one more underground. So I'm not even saying that they're like washed. I'm not saying that at all. I mean, because there's plenty of, we have, our game is a disrespectful game, so I'm not moving back. <laughs> this is my real feelings about this actor, you know? So we just had to make sure we kept it in a certain space so it was an enjoyable experience for our, you know, customers. So they're like, who's that again? I got to Google. Then that kind of, like, take might take people out of the, the zone. Mm, no, that definitely makes a lot of sense. And I appreciate you talking about the journey. But what I love is you never let like perfection stop you from progress. So it's like, look, we're going to put this out. And I love the OG deck. I think the design is dope. But I know for you, you're closest to the card. You're seeing everybody, you know, interact with the game. So now what I'm also seeing is like your new deck. It's like, okay, maybe we don't have a tuck box. Maybe we, you know, evolve into something that can like live mm -hmm. on the shelves for a little bit longer and stuff like that. But I still got my tuck box from 2016. <laughs> Listen, that is a that is a collector's item. So definitely Let me hold on to that because when the TV show comes it. out. <laughs> hold on to it because you someone asked, like, oh, how can I buy the that deck? I was like, from where? We don't have it. I barely have a deck that's intact. You know, because my deck, because our thing was like, sell the deck, sell the decks. Like we do, I do archive certain things, but a lot of my deck I was using to play with. So it, it had wear and tear on it. So there's people, honestly, very early on, I don't know who this girl is and I hope she's doing well, but we were like maybe like two months out, this woman, well, she, I want to call her a girl, but she was youthful, right? She was like in her twenties and she bought two decks and she was like, I want you to autograph it, right? And it was like her and my business partner was there too. And she was like, yeah, I'm not even going to use this. So I see you, sis, playing the long game. And this was in 2016. She peeped it. She peeped it. Yeah. <laughs> so um, with the long game in mind and being in the game for 2016, so this makes six or seven years, 2022, I got to remember, 2022. So like six years this year. Wow. So what has that journey been? So like once you started, okay, 2016, the cards are out there. Like now if we go on your page, we see all of your followers. We see you've been featured in magazines. But can you like take us like if you had to just pull highlights from that 2016 to 2022, what are some of the highlights from that time? So some of the highlights of like 
uh, I tell people the number one highlight, this is, that happened, this happened in lockdown. Um, Bet the Man played, right? So that is a, you know, and then one, like, girl, Met the Man. Like, some, something I made made Met the Man laugh. Put that on my tombstone, okay? I, I've added my contribution to society. It doesn't matter, you know? But outside of being, you know, a heterosexual woman with eyes, <laughs> right? It's great because he's played and the game started because his contributions to the culture and Wu-Tang's contributions to the culture, if like his career directly impacted our career and to see him play is just like full circle moment. Like that's one of my top highlights. And of course, Redman playing and then just seeing other people that we who are in the game play the game. Mm-hmm. It was amazing. Um, let me see. I think one of our first times, one of our first times where I guess like a celebrity kind of kind of got a hold of the game, Knife Wonder. I, I still to this day don't know how Knife Wonder got a hold of the game, but he took a picture of it. He took a picture of the card, and this was in 2017, I believe. And we were at Howard Homecoming. We were like, like doing like a tour down there, and he took a picture of the game. I took a picture of the card and I forgot which card it was. It was, it was like a race one person from hip hop history. And I don't know if it was the card that Black Thought is on, but Black Thought and Maxwell and a bunch of people are like going crazy in his comment sections about the, about the game. And it's like, oh my gosh, get University of Dope, get University of Dope. So that was fun. So a, a bunch of different like celebrities have gotten a hold of the game and played it at one point. Um, there was the dream, Christina Milian and and like his wife, right? And they were all like talking about it like, <laughs> in the comment section. And I'm just like, wait, what? Like, we don't want to break up no 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 families, right? We know y'all have a thing going on, a unit. <laughs> but yeah, those are some of the, the highlights for sure of celebrities playing. That is super, that's a lot of names. That's a yeah. lot of cele- and then I'm sure there are many more that maybe they didn't post it, but I'm sure that they've they've got it, which speaks to how unique the game is. And I think another thing that speaks to how unique the game is, is like, I, I personally haven't seen anyone try to touch anything as, as close to this. Like nothing is touching this in terms of like, you have a niche and your focus. And I think it's because like you said, you didn't necessarily create it because stats said black Americans are buying this type of card game. You made it cause you wanted it for yourself. And then it mm-hmm. just blossomed from there. And I think that speaks to the authenticity. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And we we didn't know a whole bunch about gaming either. Right. We were just like just showing up like, hey, like that's how our, <laughs> our energy is. And it's it's worked out in our in our benefit. Mm. And so like given like the celebrities that have, you know, played the game, your your features and different magazines and the different interviews that you've had and all that you've shared over the years coming up on year six. If you had to choose just one success to pull up to, what would that one success be? Oh, man. Ah, oh, it's a tie. Um, because those are all, like, successes. But being in the field is one of, like, my greatest joys because you're seeing people enjoy it and love it in real time like when we're at events and festivals like we're playing it and people play it and then they, they light up they laugh they cry like a whole bunch of stuff like argue and we're like hey you know buy the game and go home but uh, <laughs> but between doing afropunk which was in our like 2017 we were sponsored by afropunk to do like an activation and that was just like such a well-oiled machine i think that was just one of my favorite um activations that we've ever ever done so i'll i'll hey i'll pull up to that that's dope i probably wouldn't have that afropunk (laughs) yeah it was it was a great one and we had like volunteers and we had shirts that had unpopular opinions on it and people who didn't get a chance to interact with our game like took pictures of it you know like tupac is average right so people are reacting to that so it was a very good um you know, event marketing type of event. So it was great. Mm. Well, you know, we're going to have to play. But before we play, just for folks who might be out there like, oh, I want to make a card game. And, you know, 
I don't know where to start. Is just, is there any tips or just anything you would share to people out there who are like, I want to make a card game in 2022? Anything, words of wisdom that you would share with them? Well, um, get your money up. You have to get your money up. Like that, that is the number one thing you have to, because you can, and you have, and you have to be willing to, to, to spend, right? Even though, even though games usually don't, you know, you can't sell a fifty dollar game, right? Mm-hmm. Like you have to have it a. I mean, you can do whatever you want. It's a free country, but <laughs> you want to make like a business of it, right? I have not seen a game that was more than thirty dollars, yeah. Right, and that's that's it if you're going like full Dungeons and Dragons and model <laughs> towers and all of that stuff like that, right? So you have to be willing to spend, and it's um, buying in bulk, right? Because some people start off like there's there are um, print to order type of like card companies, but that that price is crazy, mm-hmm. you know. And um, people have asked me about like you know flashcards and just different affirmation cards, just different things like that. Um, you know, you just have to like get test, you know, be able to test it out. So yeah, it's it's capital. Yeah. yeah. And have you, this is a, this is a, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, and don't be discouraged, right? I'm not saying that like, oh man, I'm broke. Cause you know, we all, when you're starting a business, everyone, no one's like rich or anything like that, but you have to just don't get discouraged by that. Cause you're always going to keep changing and evolving the game because even with your OG deck, we've changed it a couple of times. So I'm not even sure which OG deck you have, right? <laughs> like there's one, like there are, oldest of old g deck like the pop quiz card says pop quiz in red oh, right okay. and then there's other ones along the way like if i saw your deck i can i can tell but it's you're always going to improve okay i don't think i see red in this one <laughs> yeah well then, then you know there's different levels to the og but yeah you're always going to improve and if you think about it if you think about let's say mcdonald's yes wow you have an og deck <laughs> i appreciate you oh my gosh you are the truth yes yes that is yeah that is like jordan retro 13s of the car <laughs> yes. yes girl hold on to that one because i'm not even sure i have a full deck of that one so you got it yeah and if you think about let's say mcdonald's right look at the logo of mcdonald's it's been the golden arches but the arches have changed mm-hmm. over the years over the decades so you always have to be willing to improve and not be so married to the idea that it has to be like this all the way. You know, you can change, you can evolve. And think about McDonald's with whether you eat it or not, because I don't, but it's still a good business model, right? There's the, remember how McDonald's had like the fun house and Ronald, when's the last time you seen Ronald McDonald? <laughs> Good point. They, after don't it, go- they had to get rid of Ronald McDonald, I think. Yeah. <laughs> You know, kids don't even go to McDonald's anymore. Now it's these, you know, influencer meals. And now they just read, they're redoing all the McDonald's to make it look like cafes. You know, it's not that yellow anymore. It looks like an office building. Yep, it's it's definitely important to pivot, not only with the times, but like when it makes sense to you. Um, And sometimes you're the only one that can have the answer to that. Um, I was going to geek out a little bit for like the card game makers out there. And I was going to ask um, when it came to funding your card game, like you said, you got to get your money up. A lot of card makers, game makers out there go to Kickstarter campaigns and crowdfunding. I don't even know if Kickstarter was like a thing back in 2016, but did you and your partner go ahead and self fund or did you look into outside investments to get your first set of inventory? So here's the key since we're here, right? And I like you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the key is we we did start like Indiegogo and we use Kickstarter. We were kind of scared of the all or nothing with Kickstarter, right? So we left Kickstarter there like, hey, you know, there's some people who just kind of like peruse Kickstarter and just like fund the whole thing. And we were hoping something like that would happen, which did not. But whatever, right? But everything, but we promoted our Indiegogo. So it's like whatever you make, you you would get, right? So we have that. And then as we were doing our Kickstarter, someone tried to steal our idea, right? <laughs> oh, you, you how'd you leave this out? <laughs> that's, that's how I said we ain't talking. Like, you're getting the tea. You're right, you're right. You, 
talking, drinking, yeah. building trust. Well, <laughs> yes, someone tried to steal our idea. Um, I told you, I mentioned to everyone that I'm an influencer. So I do know a good amount of like bloggers and things like that. And I reached out to one that was into doing like game nights. So I was like, hey, this would be great coverage. Hey, you know, we spoke, whatever. It would be cool. And that person, right? I'm not giving any genders or anything like that. That person um, decided, you know, I'm going to just do this game, right? <laughs> and as we were promoting, um, you know, some some people would reach out to me like, oh, is this your game? And it's like, it wasn't our game. And we sent cease and desist letters. And people always say that, like, Sue, do this. No. Because cease and desist letters are expensive. They're not cheap, you know, and you have to be able to enforce it. Right. That's also not cheap. And we're in our crowdfunding. We're just starting. And the quality, no shade, but all shade to them wasn't like how ours were because we put so much effort and thought into like our branding and everything at that time. Well, continuously. And she had a really large following. Oh, I said she. Oh, whatever. No, it's OK. It's OK. <laughs> doesn't matter. Nowadays. <laughs> doesn't it matter. Kick rocks. Right. <laughs> They had a really large following and I they had like had like a business partner. I reached out like, hey, this person, I don't know if you know, but this is our idea. Why I don't I don't want you to get caught up with this person, um, infringing upon it. And at the time I had I went to like a food and wine festival and I met Action Bronson. So that was my profile picture because we had took a selfie and our game, we didn't have the game in print yet. So I just would tell him, I told him about the game. So we took a selfie and that was my profile picture. And they took the screenshot of me saying like, hey, don't steal our game, right? And put it on their social, like to shame me. This is, the, this is 2016, so this, I don't even know if the shade room was out, but they put it on their, their social to, to kind of like, and like, you're stupid. Like, what are you, this internet lawyer? And there could be more than one. Made it sound like I was a hater. Made it sound like me, a hater. And um, that snowballed our following <laughs> because people started following us because I guess you know people saw that hey you shouldn't be stealing people's ideas so that and then that plus the picture with Action Bronson kind of like lend credibility to, to myself and yeah so what ended up happening they did not reach their crowdfunding and we actually we we were self-funded so our crowdfunding just added to like our advertisement and things like that and we spent a lot of money flooding Facebook ads in that person's area. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, so. <laughs> it's like petty with a business acumen. And that's how you do it. That's how you do it all. Happy Black History Month. <laughs> Whoa, this, I was not ready for this. Let me pull up to, let me pull up to that. Hey, I mean, hey, they say God don't like ugly, but what a story. Yeah. So um that's what happened. And it doesn't exist. Their their game doesn't exist. Um we actually watched the kick the crowd funder, like you know, the Kickstarter like go down, the countdown and not be funded because that's the type of people we are. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Oh my gosh. Well, Ooh, let us know if you're in the chat listening to this. If this story just made you go like, "Woo!" I don't know, drop an emoji, drop a drink if you feel like yeah. you need a drink. After yeah. This one. So uh, I tell you, I'm from New York, baby. We don't play. <laughs> you want to play? We can play. We can play. So um, and then what ended up happening? We were supposed to launch on December first, but what we end up doing in conjunction with the Facebook ads um, in that area, and that's still one of our highest markets to this day. Um, <laughs> we, we actually, we started selling, like we ended our crowdfunding early and we just went straight to selling. We went straight wow. to pre-orders. So we started November 1st instead of December 1st. And literally we would hit the, we had prototype decks and we would go to any event selling, didn't have a physical deck. And we were just like, Hey, you play the game. You can have this game at home. And we were just like selling it like that. Oh so. my gosh, that's that's amazing. I I'm sorry you had to go through that and I know it made you stronger out in the end and in a weird way, like when they say everything happens for a reason, like it's like, okay, you can put me on blast on your page. Now I got followers because everyone sees right through this and 
So I'm glad you came out on top and you're still here in 2022. And we know it will be in beyond. Yeah. <laughs> People send um, the tea emoji. Yeah, the tea, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so make sure whatever your idea is, right? Because our idea was so niche, not saying that it will be hard to duplicate because that person tried. But if you have something that's more generic, right? Like a monopoly or something like that, something more, I shouldn't say generic, more widespread, more, you know, could be mainstream or something like that. You can easily, easily, like someone can plug it right out. And then, then what, then what do you do? So just make sure as you're starting your ideas, I know putting things off legally, you know, be like, Oh, I can't afford it. Find the money for that. For sure. Mm -hmm. Because we could have done things so confidently because we did, we were protected out the gate. And this was, we didn't have a physical card game. You see how quick that could happen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. No, I think that's a, that's an important lesson. And I'm glad you were protected to do it. And to your point, like you might think a cease and desist letter is just, oh, let me just, but it, things cost and add up. Um, mm -hmm. so, so yeah, when you have a good thing, people are going to want to imitate it, but they won't ever be able to implement it like you. So, mm -hmm. whew, oh my you gosh, know, you know, you gotta, you gotta get a little dirty, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's not even, you know, it's a hip hop game. It could have been worse. So, <laughs> I mean, disrespectful hip hop game, you know, um, last card game maker question since you you know change the design of your game over time have you also changed manufacturers as you've expanded and grown like did you start domestic and then go international have you stuck with the same manufacturer because it always worked out yes to all of what you just said um we <laughs> have changed we started off domestic your og deck is definitely you know america Right, and we went, <laughs> so you got that. We got the you know born in the USA deck, and we changed different manufacturers overseas. Um, and that's always that's something that's always evolving, right? So nothing, nothing that you do or choose is like okay, this is it, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Nothing. So um, with our manufacturer overseas, we have changed several times. You know, just testing to find things better, better, better products. Can you do this? When we change from a tuck box to this type of box, can you do that? How does it look? How does it feel? Da, 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 the price, the time, the turnaround, all of those things come into play when you're, when you're doing that. And just across the whole business, because I briefly touched on it, but I gave you guys the tea instead, but I briefly touched on, um, on it when COVID, when quarantine started, we had to pivot and create the University of Dope Game Show. Right. So mm -hmm. you always have to evolve. And that became a revenue stream for us. So we started doing private events and, um, you know, just different events doing the game show, but just in a virtual way. So, yeah, you always have to be thinking, always have to have your wheels turning. That's dope. And I imagine having the experience from the activations at Afropunk kind of gave you the experience or the creativity needed to pivot to a game show in COVID? Or do you feel like they were totally different, like the activation versus game show? Well, I mean, I've had several, I've worked in several like industries that are related to each other. So yeah. some of them, including being like a brand ambassador. So doing that helped with the activation for Afropunk because I've worked for like Nesquik, right? And that's me, that's actually where me and, our events coordinator met at. We used to work for <laughs> Best Quick <laughs> on their marketing team. So we knew about field activations and doing things like in the wild. And my background, where I went to school for film and television. So that, you know, with the virtual part, like that adds to it as well. So everything, you know, you just think of, I think of my life as several different steps to get to this point. Mm -hmm. You know, and all every, everything has made sense. So I'm grateful for for that. Ooh, I I'm so happy we're talking, and I know it's like we have like you know a small quorum of folks who are tuning in. But I appreciate your honesty, your authenticity, and like I said, clearly I'm an OG. So um, now it's time to play the game. And so because we're on Instagram Live, how would you? I feel like it's going to be easy, but how would you like to play? And for those who for some reason don't have University of Dope yet. Can you explain how to play the game? Okay. Well, we can play it in a way where 
I'll read the question. Mm -hmm. You can give your answer and people can answer in the audience. Perfect. Okay. So University of Dope is not a trivia game. It is majority rule. So you want to basically read the room. Okay, so you see, you guys look above, you look below, you see who's in here, you see there's two women here, you know, and different, you got to think about the regions, ages, all of that, and that's how you read the room. And when you're playing the deck, right, everyone has choice cards, A, B, C, or D, right? And I read a multiple choice question, you would vote face down, then you reveal the answer, and whoever is in the majority would have won that round. That is how the game goes. Then there are pop quiz questions. So something like choose two people to have a Harlem Shake battle, and then you decide if they win or lose. <laughs> and if they win, we encourage hating. I told you we are a disrespectful party game for hip-hop lovers. So <laughs> if you think their Harlem Shake was trash, guess what? Make them drink. All right? So I am going to... Let me see. I'm going to read the first question. Did I? I put some questions to the side here just for this moment. All right. <clears throat> Which would you rather have tattooed on your forehead? I know this is not in your deck. Um, a, it is Zillia. No, I'm sorry. A, a, Iggy Azalea verse tattooed on your forehead or B, an Azalea Banks Twitter rant tattooed on your forehead. Which one would you rather have? A, an Iggy verse, or B, an Azalea Banks Twitter rant? I'm going to say, and it's funny because I was listening to a podcast and they reference Azalea Banks. It's going to be long, but I'm going to say Azalea Banks because she's black. And depending on the rant, sometimes... Sometimes, don't worry, I'm not a pick me or anything, but sometimes yeah. she'd be having valid points. Like she just called out Kanye. Not all the time, so I don't know if it's a tweet at random, but if I could choose a tweet, I'd prefer Azalea Banks over an Iggy, even though Iggy's songs are definitely not written by her. So so that's what I'm going to say. Let's see what the, the chat says. Okay, we, have some, we have some Iggy. I mean, we have some Azalea Banks in there. I mean, I... Oh, it's tough. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to... I'm, I know I, I I know this is not par, par of the course for Black History Month, but I'm going with Iggy. Okay? <laughs> I got you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to remember Iggy Azalea songs, but um I can't remember, but I'm so fancy. Just put that on my head. I can so identify with that. It's I'm so fancy. Part, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just put that on my forehead and that speaks to me. <laughs> All right. So we have who's winning a jailhouse brawl? A. Debrat. B. Remy Ma. C. Young and May. Or D. Foxy Brown. Okay, who's winning a jailhouse bra uh, brawl? I'm going to say it's going to be Remy Ma because I think she was in jail for the longest and I feel like no one's going to mess with her. Um, the brat, I don't know about the brat's time in jail, but just because she has a rough, tough exterior, I don't know if that means she's about the brawl life. Young MA, you said, and um, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm gonna just go with Remy Ma. What do y'all think in the chat? <laughs> Either Remy, oh, you said Foxy Brown. I was trying to, mm -hmm. I think I saw Foxy Brown perform recently, not recently, like maybe b before COVID, and um. No, I don't. I don't think it's a Foxy Brown at all. <laughs> and I mean, this question gets the people going. I've had people look up like their height, weight, wingspan. You know, like as a boxer, like a boxer, right? I mean, I will say, young. I mean, Remy Ma is the tallest, right? Um, Foxy Brown. I believe Foxy Brown is the shortest, and. I mean, actually, they're all short, with the exception of Remy Ma, mm -hmm. um, like five, five and under kind of thing. Yes, yes. So yes. I, I, um, I'm gonna stick to my answer on that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, I, I see a, a Remy or Foxy. All right, cool. Yeah, the wingspan. They were checking for it. <laughs> <laughs> all of that. All right, I have this one. I think this is this might be in your deck. Um, 
It's about to be Valentine's Day. So best thug love collaboration. Now, this tells me everything I need to know about the age group of people, right? So I'm reading to you. A, always on time, Ja Rule featuring Lashanti. Okay. B, You're All I Need, Met the Man featuring Mary J. Blige. C, Dilemma, Nelly featuring Kelly Rowland. Or D, Best of Me remix, Maya featuring Jay-Z. I'm going to have to, just because it's giving me the vibes. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm a millennial, 90s baby. You're all I need to get back. Uh, you know, and Mary's about to be at a Super Bowl and, you know. Yeah. So, and I knew Dilemma yeah. was going to be on there, but I got to, that, you just, you just brought me back. Like, I wasn't expecting that to be on there. So you just brought me back to a time. Exactly. So, <laughs> okay, Black Girls of Starbucks said this is hard. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> You're all I need is the right answer. Even though we say there are no right answers, that is the right answer. That is objectively I mean, the right answer. <laughs> yeah. I mean, younger people who I've seen play, um, they have picked, like, Dilemma. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, I mean, are people picking Nelly nowadays? Psh, after dark. <laughs> oh, after dark. So, <laughs> pop quiz. Pop quiz. Lord. I mean, we won't be able to do this pop quiz, but this is just one of my pop quizzes that we have. Like, we have do your best DMX impersonation. We have uh, best DJ Khaled impersonation. And then we have ciphers. So going clockwise in a circle. First person to mess up, we take ah, a drink. Gotcha. Um, recite the lyrics to Fresh Prince of Bel-Air theme song. Okay. All like, by myself. Ooh, Okay, we can do it. In West Philadelphia, born and raised. On the playground is where I spent most of my days. Chilling out, Max, and relaxing all cool. And I was shooting some beatball outside of school. When a couple of guys, they were up to no good. Started making trouble in my neighborhood. I got a one low fight. My mom got scared. You're moving with your auntie and uncle in Bel Air. <laughs> when they came, oh man. I wish I'm going to take the drink on that one. Take drink on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Whew. Okay. I'm glad we got that card because I was like, shit, she wants me to recite the verse of what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to go through eh, I have three more cards. So. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. I have, who would you rather be? A, left eyes fire safety instructor. Or B, Chris Brown's publicist. Ooh. <laughs> it's the silence for me. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm going to have to go with Left Eye's fire safety instructor. I'm sure she learned the lesson from burning down the house. You know, rest in peace. Chris Brown. Um is kind of leaning into Kanye territory. I don't know what can be done for a Chris Brown at this point. I mean, I don't know. At this point, I feel like uh, Chris Brown's publicist is having a better time than the baby's publicist. Touche. <laughs> like, man, that man only goes viral for violence. <laughs> like, they need to call him the criminal. Like... <laughs> Hey, that's the next, that's the publicist's next move. We're going to do a rebrand and, uh, and we're going to name him the criminal. How do you guys think? I think that works. I like, you know, <laughs> I always imagine that like when people, cause when, whenever, even though, like a bad decision is made, multiple people thought it was okay. So I think about like a meeting room, like, okay, so we have him, the baby, right. But we're thinking about, and they pull down like the white screen and it's like the criminal <laughs> and everyone thought it was cool. But yeah. <laughs> All right. Actually, these are both similar, so I'm going to just do one. Okay. Erase one person from hip-hop history. A, Nas, B, Biggie, C, Tupac, or D, Jay-Z? Jeez. I need the audience. 
black girls who love Starbucks, I need your answer specifically. Because <laughs> Imani's holding I'm it down in the Robin. audience. Brooklyn is representing. <laughs> Everyone's just like, and I'm stumped. <laughs> yeah. You have to pick one. Okay. And you are I'm erasing them. It's like they were never born. So this is, um, it's unpopular opinion. That's why you call it, right? So mm -hmm. I'm, and this man is fine. So you already know where this is headed. I'm gonna have to go with Nas. Um, I had the honor of seeing Nas in concert a couple of months ago, um, socially distanced. And, you know, he's a fine, fine man. And I know he's always named in the top five. I personally cannot really recite many of Nas's songs. Um, he's for the like the old hip hop heads like mm -hmm. yeah but yeah. you know sometimes I just want to be able to like recite the song and maybe that's on me but yeah it's okay this is an intimate setting right now so what what's your answer <laughs> you know what I it's funny that you mentioned that black girls who love Starbucks um I pick Jay-Z too sometimes mm -hmm. just when I want to shake the table because I am a troll but <laughs> I do feel that way. If, you know, if Jay-Z didn't exist, right? He wouldn't cheat on Beyonce. See? There you go. So that alone. <laughs> That's enough for me. <laughs> and I'm not even the big, I'm not even the beehive. But, you know, can't just do my girl like that. Like, come on. This is true. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you can go. It's cool. Oh my gosh. Well, AB, this has been amazing. And I love like, first of all, Instagram Live came out like last year or something like that. So you and I are talking and I literally feel like I'm in your living room and we're just chatting. And I feel like whenever I'm in Brooklyn or whenever you're in the DMV, let me know. Cause I don't know, like I just give good vibes. And this was yes, hilarious. Yes, yes. <laughs> we, we, are we going? I mean, we're definitely want to go out there uh, for broccoli. Okay. Um, we're, yeah, we're gearing up all the festivals. That's what we want to do. Um, we've been putting our application out there, and you know, we're trying to be out. You know, we're trying to be outside, <laughs> okay, masked up, but outside. <laughs> That's what's up. Yeah. No, that that makes sense. You know, University of Dope, music, card game, hip hop, disrespectful, more activations. I'm here for it. I'm sending all the positive vibes and energy your way. And so, before we close out, um, what I always like to ask is. How can we support you beyond, or I shouldn't say beyond, in addition to purchasing, in addition to following? Because I hope that's a given always. But mm -hmm. what's an intentional way that we can support your brand that we might not think about? Well, if you know anyone that um, is interested in having our services, that is something we want to promote more our virtual game show that we do corporate events. So get your boss to pay for it. Um, you know, Women's History Month is coming up. We're we're you know we're in the midst of Black History Month, but you can get get your DNI group to you know to to hire us because that's that's what the budget's for. You know, fun stuff like that. And if you know if you're like, hey, I'm a freelance, I don't have DNI group. That's great too. We do birthday parties, your retirement party, bat mitzvah. If anybody's in who does who participates in that, we're here for that too. So yeah. For definitely participating in um, our services and also if you have a blog podcast and you enjoyed listening to me and you like to listen to me again book me so we can be on the show on your podcast or blog or anything i'm willing to talk to anybody i got you i got you i'm thinking about the corporate element and i'm like hmm, okay i think i got something in mind we'll see what these corporate dollars are looking like and um podcast so i'm gonna shout out my friend talia who the fuck is Talia Cadet is her podcast. It just came out last year. Um, I think it would be amazing to have you on there. But um, yeah, anyway, I'm big on collaboration over competition. It's enough room for University of Dope to be on the shelf, whole card game to be on the shelf, because I don't know anyone in life who only has one card game at the house chilling. Um, yep. It's always well, the that's best. People. <laughs> Pepsi, Pepsi and Coca-Cola exist. That part? And they've been existing. So why can't multiple of us exist? And then there's the other colas too that you don't know about, right? Or you may know about, you might get it from your bodega or something like that. Okay. So all of those exist, but you know, Pepsi and Cola exist and that's where 
that's what I think about. Where it's like, you know, sometimes with black owned brands, we feel like one person did this, so I can't do that. Of course, don't infringe upon. Yeah, don't copies. don't be that influencer. Yeah, don't don't do that. <laughs> But you can exist. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, sending you all the positive vibes and energy. Hopefully, I'll see you at Broccoli Fest, Afropunk, all the festivals as outside opens up again. Hopefully, we'll see if people act right. Um, and thank you again. Like, once again, it's like, you know, OG to I'm just like new to this game. And I appreciate, um, I just want to highlight y'all. Like, I appreciate Black brands that I've been like, owning y'all's games for so long like y'all responding to an email like i'm not getting these connections because me and ab like went to school in connecticut together like i'm reaching out and just asking like hey would you be open to it and so i just really appreciate you saying yes and we had a good time yeah i'm all here for the vibes <laughs> that's what the v and ab stands for the vibes <laughs> <laughs> all right well i know you had a long day with interviews so i'm gonna let you go but thank you so much again y'all follow university of dope um please come out to festivals and activations and spread the word and we will be in touch thank you so much for having me thank you have a good night you too bye